In this video, we're going to um, see how to use um, nonlinear filtering and particularly the median filter with ImageJ and uh, what are the effects of a median filtering. So first of all, we're going to, so still with this image, we're going to apply a Gaussian blur and a median uh, filtering on the same uh, image. So let's duplicate this image first. If I go to image, duplicate. So GB for Gaussian Blur and duplicate again and MF for Median Filtering. Okay, so let's start with the Gaussian Blurring. I go to Image uh, Process Filters Gaussian Blur. I'm going to use a kernel of 3 to have quite a drastic effect so we can more easily compare the two uh, filterings. And now let's apply a median filtering. Median, same size. Okay. So just to recapitulate, when you do a Gaussian blurring, you apply a Gaussian function. So it's not averaging, but it's it's uh, it's similar to averaging with um, different weights. So for the you know closer pixels, but um, still it's similar to an averaging with a median filtering you look at all the intensity in a, in a window and then you take the median intensity in this middle in, in this window to replace uh, the center pixel of the mid of, of the window so let's um, look at this nucleus for example of the Gaussian blurring it's just blurred you can see uh, the contours are uh, not well defined. It's hard to say where it starts and when the nucleus starts. Really hard to say from the background, and everything is just like a big blur. With the median filtering, um, so you see that in the background it's, it's very uniform. Inside the nucleus, it's it's pretty uniform, but you still have if you have you know some variation, you can still see some some variation where in, in the Gaussian blurring you can't see anything. But the, the most interesting uh, effect for this uh, objects, for example, uh, is that the contours are well preserved compared to the Gaussian blurring where they're not preserved at all. Um, sorry. If we compare to the original image, so we we'll see that inside the nucleus here we have some fluctuation that are not preserved. And when you do a filtering, you know, that's what you want to do. You want to have a more uniform background and more uniform nuclei, for example, so like in here. So it's easy to separate your foreground from your background. Can be one example of an application. But the, the, the very interesting uh, thing here is that uh, if you look at the contour here, it's, it's completely preserved here. So if you want to identify segmentation mask, it's going to be much easier to do it with your median filtering than with your Gaussian uh, blurring, where it's clearly not as well preserved. All right, so that was just you know visual inspection of both filtering. Also, it's always interesting. Now let's look at... Um, an application for which median filtering is, is kind of magic uh, is when you add uh, salt and pepper noise. So let's add salt and pepper noise to this image. So I think it's in analyze. No, it's in process noise. Yeah, process noise, add noise. And no, sorry. Oh, okay. Let's just open again, same image. Process, noise, salt and pepper. Oh, it has to be 8-bit. So, image type 8-bit. Process, noise, salt and pepper. All right, finally. So, what's a salt and pepper noise? It's actually, it's, it's just randomly adds um, high-intensity pixel and very low-intensity. So, let's go... Let's zoom in so you see you have random uh, white pixel 
everywhere in in the background and in the in the nuclei we also have random black pixels everywhere so we don't see them really in the background but you also have them but in the nuclei we clearly see them all right so if we apply a gaussian blurring to this image we're going to average this uh, noise so that's going to help to for example is, is if if your goal is still to identify nuclei from the background, it's going to be easier because here you have very, um, so you have all of these outliers and by blurring, we're going to average the intensity in the background. So these outliers are going to be less visible. Same thing in the nuclei. So let me just duplicate this image because we're going to apply a Gaussian blurring and the media filtering again on this uh, noisy image. So if I go to duplicate, it's going to be Gaussian blur and let's duplicate it again it's going to be the median <laughs> filtering okay so let's first apply a gaussian blur process filters gaussian blur so maybe not three is going to be too large all right so you see uh that's it's it's probably easier to deal with but it's not great it's not great because it's it's both blurry and we still have lots of intensity in the background next you know definitely makes it harder uh, to analyze but Gaussian blurring might help you know if you, if you, again if you want to segment the nuclei it might help but now let's look at uh, the median filter filter median so yeah, three, it's gonna be fine too now you see uh as just magic um you don't have any noise left and you still have your nuclei uh, and you know it's it's just what you expect because um when you have noise even if you have a lot of noise if you take a window in the background and you take the median intensity so you're gonna have outliers white and black pixels but they're, they're going to be you know the very high values very low values the median intensity is going to be an intensity that is in the background so you're going to restore everywhere you're going to restore it and in the nuclei it's going to be the same because you, you so ex, except here where you have high values that's not you know it's going to not going to deteriorate but again you know you're going to have your outliers going to be very high very low values when you take the median intensity is going is not going to be one of those and so when you apply the median it's just perfect 